All right, guys, welcome back. Our, our oil kit came in. We have our new oil filter, which is the BMW one. We have our crush washer right there. We obviously have our four quarts of oil. We're first gonna pour a little bit of oil into here, and then we're gonna outline this with oil very well so that it doesn't end up sticking to the block. All right, so now we got our new crush washer. We put it on here, and then we'll install this. All right, we have our oil drain plug installed with the new crush washer. We tightened it to 28 newton meters, which is basically 20 foot pounds. You could tighten it to that and you'll be okay. Also, we have our new oil filter installed. We made sure to rub oil around the oil seal pretty good and we put a little bit of oil in here before we mounted it to the uh, engine block. We have our oil filter in place. I tightened it by hand as much as I could. And then I used the tool just to snug it up just a tiny bit more. This thing actually has like a tether because the guy took it to the track and they required that. So I just kind of lightly put it on there. I'm not going to the track with this thing yet at least. So that's on there. It's all good to go. We started to put this piece on. You can tell it has that nice twill weave stuff. So I got to put that on and then start to put on the lower uh, belly pans. All right, look at these belly pans. Looking pretty darn sick. It's gonna look awesome on the bike. All right, we have our lower right side belly pan on, and this thing looks great. As you can see, it looks awesome. Now we just gotta put the other side on. And the left side is on. Now I noticed, and it's just a little bit of a problem, but I'm pretty sure I could fix it. If you can see, this part right here is just barely, that part right there is just barely touching the exhaust, just a tiny bit. It's just so close, like there's room, but there's not. You know, if worse comes to worse, I could always just put a little bit of heat tape on that little section and maybe just going across here just for a safe measure because the other side's good. Other side is good, we got plenty of space there. So I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, worse comes to worse, I'll put heat tape on it. But yeah, overall, Things looking awesome. Now it's like 90% done for the most part. We're just gonna get little things here and there, but we're pretty much done with how this color scheme is gonna go. Yeah, so I am pumped. Like that thing's fucking sick, dude. That thing is sick. So we got some used mirrors in good condition because these things are just shot. Both of them end up folding in by themselves at high speed and especially um, and you can see this thing has some pretty decent play and this one's even worse yeah this thing like literally it, it pushes in so easily so these things are shot but we have these good used ones that seem to be pretty stiff which is good so we're just going to clean them up a little bit and then we'll get them on the bike all right so this was the better side of the old one and you can see all the play that it has right and this is the new one there's like no place, so these are gonna be awesome. It was a good buy, I got them for like 80 bucks for the pair, which is pretty good for OEM mirrors that are in great shape like this. So I cleaned up this one. You can see it looks that nice dark black color after I used the cleaner on it. Now we'll go and install the other side. All right, so we got both of them installed and they're nice and snug. They barely move at all and they're pretty hard to push in. So obviously I know that when I'm really, you know, taking this thing to redline in each gear, you know, it's not gonna be folding in because I had both of them folded on the other ones. Obviously the old ones um, were on the bike when the bike got tipped over in the garage from the previous owner. So I can understand that part being broken, but this is nice and solid. So I am good to go. So yeah, pretty pumped. And look at how clean these things came out. They look like they're brand new. So pretty souped. Now I have to change out these things because these were some aftermarket junk ones and you can see on the ones that you're supposed to have, they actually, right here, they actually end up moving up and they secure it really good. These things are junk. So change those out. All right, so we got both sides in nice and tight. So now that's good to go. So I'm actually gonna take this for a little ride, adjust the uh, mirrors, 
So we just finished cleaning our chain. We use this clean, uh, Maxima cleanup chain cleaner and obviously a grunge brush. We use that. I basically dried it all and now I'm gonna be using Bell Ray Super Clean. This is actually an old bottle. Now it's kind of like a blue color. But uh, I just found this in the garage. I must have forgot I had it there. So now we're gonna lube, lube up the chain and it's gonna be like a nice white color. All right, so here's how it's looking right now. You can see it's a nice bright white color. I did have to wipe down the sprocket a lot and uh, some other little areas because I got it on there. But it is recommended to heat up the chain first. But since I used that cleaner, I didn't want any like rust to happen on it. So like I said, I, I used the cleaner, scrubbed it, sprayed it down with water, dried it as best as I could, and then I put this stuff on. It's usually good to let this sit for like 15, 20 minutes. And it's usually non-fling for the most part. But like I said, uh, I'm gonna go take this for a quick little ride down the street just to heat it up a little bit. And then I'll do a second coat just to make sure that it's fully lubed. Also, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be removing the decibel killer. There is a bolt right there. I'll tell you what it is after I take it off, but you gotta unscrew this all the way, take it out, and then get some type of vice grip or something. I'm gonna put a uh, thick t-shirt, that's a, you know, a junk one that I don't really care about, and then I'll wrap the, um, the needle nose pliers or whatever it is that I'm gonna use to just pull this thing out. I used the eight millimeter wrench to get the majority of it out. There is this little like digging, some type of washer. And then eventually it got to a point where I had to use these to just keep turning it out. All right, now we'll take out the uh, decibel killer insert. All right, as you can see, we do have the decibel killer out and it did add some pretty good noise to this thing. It does have um, a lot more bassier sound to it, which sounds good and it's not too ridiculously loud. So I'm happy I took that out and it's gonna probably get a little bit more better airflow as well. put our second coat on here and this thing looks fucking mint ton of lube on there obviously i'm gonna let this just dry overnight because i got stuff to do so but yeah so supposedly this stuff doesn't fling off if you wait the 15 20 minutes that the uh, can recommends after spraying it with a warm chain so and i've had pretty good luck with it so and if it you know if a little bit comes off then whatever you just clean it up but yeah this stuff's great definitely recommend it so we did end up putting some heat wrap on this part over here and on the other side as well, just because of how close it was on the other side. So make sure you guys stay tuned because I do have some awesome parts coming for this thing, which I think you're gonna enjoy seeing. And this is gonna be it for the video for today. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.